Senator Whitehead. Thank you, Chairman Blumenthal. I want to um, offer a little background to the battle that we're having over the um, national effort by the Republican Party to suppress and diminish Democratic and minority voting. Um, and that is some of the peculiar behavior that is around it. We have seen, for instance, the Heritage Action video, um, a donor video in which the Heritage Action fundraiser was telling the donors behind the effort um, how successful the effort had been to get voter suppression language adopted by Republican state legislatures. Uh, they didn't even know it was us, uh, she said. Uh, we worked through, quote, sentinels to uh, get our bills passed in these states. Um, clearly, there is dark money mischief afoot uh, behind all of this. And I want to flag a group that I've looked at pretty steadily, which is a group called the Judicial Crisis Network. It pairs with Judicial Education Project. When people get up to po politics in 501c, 501c land, they usually pair a 501c3 and a 501c4 and work through that pair. Judicial Crisis Network was the group that spent the money against Garland when he was Obama's nominee, and then for Gorsuch, for Kavanaugh, for Barrett, the scheme to capture the Supreme Court for Republican donors, <clears throat> funded that with checks as big as $17 million. I think a rational person would look at somebody writing a check for $17 million and have a very reasonable question what interest they had before the court, but we don't know that because all of this was dark money and all was secret. And some of the behavior around this has been pretty mysterious, and I'll just give a quick overview here. We started with this pairing of the Judicial Crisis Network and the Judicial Education Project, both funded by a dark money funding group called Wellspring. And as they uh, went forward, we found out that <clears throat> they were paired physically as well, and their address was actually the same address as the Federalist Society, through which the court capture turnstile was being run. In fact, they're down the hall from each other. A little bit more on that later. And then at the end of 19, some peculiar corporate permutations were done, which is that the Judicial Crisis Network renamed itself as the Concord Fund, and the Judicial Education Project renamed itself as the 85 Fund, and then they both set up fictitious names for themselves with Concord Fund reviving Judicial Crisis Network as one fictitious name, but also going on to Honest Elections Project Action, which is their voter suppression effort. And similarly, the Judicial Education Project set up a fictitious name for itself as its former name, Judicial Election Project, while also adding Honest Elections Project. That was done in early 20, after the name change at the end of 19. And here's the rule under Virginia corporate law setting up this fictitious name process that they went through. And this is the guy, Leonard Leo, who the Washington Post dis disclosed as being in the middle of what was then described as a $250 million web of court capture operations, and which a hearing in my courts committee showed to be a $400 million now operation um, as more of the information has been revealed. And at the end of the day, once it was clear that Trump wasn't gonna win the election, that he was a loser in the making, and after the Washington Post expose kind of blew up Leonard Leo's role in the court capture scheme, he jumped from the Federal Society down the hall and became the person running the Honest Elections Project. So there's an element here of kind of hide the pea under the walnuts, but clearly the hundreds of millions of dollars that went into the Leonard Leo court capture operation documented by the Washington Post expose 
is now behind the so-called Honest Elections Project, the uh, latest iteration in this dark money voter suppression effort, and um, obviously very aligned with the Heritage Action Group that we caught in action talking about what they had done to press this through the um, state legislatures. So if you don't look at who's behind all this, it's hard to kind of get the joke about what's really going on. And I want to just make sure that the record of this hearing has taken us through the uh, special interest dark money funding that has been behind this operation. And I appreciate the chairman indulging me in, allowing, in that presentation. Thanks, Senator.